Tonight, continuing chaos, China faces the wrath of Typhoon Gemi with the storm making landfall and promptly causing mass havoc. Derailed plans, arson attack on France's railway system caused mass delays just hours before the start of the Olympic Games. Closing in, predictions are firm on tight race to who will take America's top job, as latest polls show Harris and Trump neck and neck. New disciplines, the 2024 Olympics are set for a brand new sport event that brings in a welcome urban twist. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than a World News Tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us on tonight's edition of World News. On our final bulletin for the week, we have for you in various updates and some added focus on the Olympic Games. But before that, we begin with some weather foes. Typhoon Gemi has made landfall in mainland China after wrecking havoc in Taiwan and the Philippines. More than 150,000 people living in the southeastern Chinese province of Fengyang have been relocated to safer areas in anticipation of the storm. Typhoon Gemi has barreled across the Taiwan Strait and arrived in eastern China, lashing the coastal Fujian province with torrential rains and winds. Streets have been turned into rivers, nearly 300,000 people have been evacuated and almost 630,000 people have been affected. In some cities, schools, offices and public transport have been closed. Near Shanghai, streets were flooded and 7,000 people were evacuated in the city of Wenzhou. The storm was expected to move northwestward into the centre of the country where it would gradually weaken bringing a slow close to its trail of destruction. On Friday, Philippine Coast Guards were racing against the clock to contain an oil spill after a tanker carrying 1.4 million litres of industrial fuel capsized in the rough seas off Manila, killing one crew member. It was one of two ships that sank in the region on Thursday. Filipino locals were also reeling after the storm triggered flooding, landslides and killed more than 30 In Taiwan, cleanup efforts were underway after the storm made landfall on Wednesday night, causing flash flooding in several cities, injuring more than 500 people and killing at least five. It was the largest typhoon to have struck the island in eight years. Still in the region of a Chinese defence spokesperson said that Chinese and Russian air forces conducted a joint strategic aerial patrol over the Bring Sea according to their annual cooperation plan. This marked the eighth such patrol to have been conducted by the two sides since 2019, according to Zhang Jiogang, a spokesperson for the Ministry of National Defence. The operation aimed to test and enhance coordination between the two air forces and to deepen strategic mutual trust and practical cooperation between the two countries. Noting that the operation did not target any third party, the spokesman said that it complied with relevant international laws and practices and was not related to any current international or regional situation. And now for some updates on the Olympic Games set to kick off just a few hours from now before we get to any specifics on the logistics and preparation we have for you, information on the rail attack in France. France's high-speed train lines were targeted by multiple malicious acts including arson in what has been described as coordinated sabotage to disrupt travel ahead of the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics. A series of fires has hit the French high-speed rail lines hours before the Paris Olympics opening ceremony. Rail company SNCF says it's a massive attack aimed at paralyzing the network. France's transport minister condemned the coordinated malicious acts. Some 800,000 customers will be affected with disruption expected all weekend, according to the rail firm. One in four Eurostar services between London and Paris will be cancelled until Monday. The action took place despite a massive security operation involving tens of thousands of troops and police to guard against any threat to the global sporting extra. 
On a related note, organizers of the Paris Olympics have promised the event will be historic for a climate. As part of its climate strategy, the committee establishes a goal of generating no more than half the planet warming gases produced by the percent summer games in London and Rio, pledging to slash emissions in three main categories, construction, transportation and operations. For the first time in the history of the Olympics, the hosts have set themselves a carbon budget. 1.58 million tons of CO2, the equivalent annual emissions of 150,000 French people. That's a lot of planet warming gases, but on the climate scale, the Paris Games won't feel as heavy as previous editions. So how exactly does Paris intend to stay within that limit? First, by drastically avoiding new constructions, one of the main sources of pollution, relying instead on existing and temporary venues like the Stade de France and the Grand Palais Ephémère, a timber structure that will be dismantled after the Games. In recent report, non-profits Carbon Market Watch and Eclaircy set out to assess the credibility of those claims, concluding the city's construction strategy could be considered, quote, robust. Another source of savings is energy. France's grid is already dominated by nuclear power, a low-carbon source. But the committee has also announced a target of 100% renewables. In reality, 80% of energy demand in French Olympic venues will be met by wind and solar farms, the remaining 20 with nuclear power. To compensate for this difference, state energy supplier EDF has committed to generating additional renewable power. In contrast, 4 million litres of diesel were burned during the London Games. For organisers, that model had to be avoided at all costs, ditching diesel generators in favour of power grid connections. But do such efforts go far enough to rein in greenhouse gases? With nearly 13 million tickets sold and 15,000 athletes competing, transport emissions are set to make up a third of the game's carbon footprint. Critics say organizers have failed to promote the use of France's extensive railway network. A full tally of emissions will be published by the Olympic Committee only after the Games are over in October. According to organizers, as of early June, one-third of the Games' carbon budget had already been spent. For the first time in history, the Summer Games will not begin in a stadium, but instead on a river. President Emmanuel Macron will take a victory lap when the host about 110s uh, of heads of state and dozens of CEOs, including Elon Musk, for the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics today. And for details on itinerary for the opening ceremony, we have with us, other than a world news special correspondent, um, Chetana Dharmaratna from Paris, France. Yes, Ekriyo. The extra virgin pageantry will peak tonight with the world's athletes parading on the boats of the Seine to tunes from pop stars including Celine Dion and Lady Gaga. While hundreds of dancers perform atop bridges over the river and on the roofs of landmarks along the way. By holding the Olympic ceremony in the Seine, the Paris 2024 organizers hope to make it more accessible to a larger audience than those paying to see the event in a stadium. In fact, they wanted to make it the first opening ceremony that would be freely accessible to the public. The Trocadero Gardens are the final destinations of the opening ceremonies. The flotilla of boats carrying all the Olympic athletes is scheduled to deposit all the passengers at the gardens directly across the river from the Eiffel Tower. At the gardens, President Macron of France will officially announce the opening of the Paris Games. Back to Akil. Thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Chetana Dharmaratna from Paris, France. Well, back in our region now, Bangladesh's leader has been accused of crying crocodile tears after she was photographed weeping at a train station that was destroyed during anti-government protests. 
At least 150 people have been killed as a result of nationwide clashes between police and university students, with security forces accused of excessive force. Protesters had been calling for quotas on government jobs to be scrapped. Online, many accused Ms. Hasina of not expressing the same level of sympathy towards those who had died or their families. The pictures were taken during Ms. Hasina's visit to a metro rail station in the city of Mirpur, where ticket vending machines and signaling control stations were shattered. Ms. Hasina was pictured frowning and wiping her tears with tissue paper. Some call the photographs an attempt to drive attention away from the deaths of the protesters. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Tonight, on the road to the White House, Vice President Kamala Harris is edging former President Donald Trump in a hypothetical general election matchup, according to the new poll conducted after President Joe Biden dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. The New York Times Siena College released a new survey that found that Trump leads Harris by only one percentage point among likely voters, 48% to 47%. Among registered voters, Trump led Harris by two percentage points. The new results reveal a tightening of the race since Democrats changed their nominee when compared to a poll in July that found Trump was leading Biden by six points. Harris secured a 10-point lead over Trump among voters 45 and younger, a key demographic that the Republican nominee was previously leading in, according to polling just three weeks earlier. According to the survey, about 79% of the Democratic or Democratic-leaning voters want Harris to be the party nominee after Biden's withdrawal from the race, while 27% think Democrats should have a competitive process to select a new nominee. Meanwhile, Barack Obama has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to be the Democratic presidential nominee, ending days of speculation over whether he would support her. Joe Biden has met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the Oval Office. The Israeli leader thanked the US President for his support of Israel over the last 50 years and said he looks forward to the pair working together in the months ahead. Clenched fists, a high-stakes meeting and a problematic power dynamic. Joe Biden looked bewildered and yet he still believes he can get Israel to end the war he helped support. It was praise, though, not policy change he got. Mr. President, we've known each other for uh, 40 years, and you've known every Israeli prime minister for 50 years, from Golda Meir. So from uh, a, a proud Jewish Zionist to a proud Irish-American Zionist, I want to thank you for uh, 50 years of public service and 50 years of support for the state of Israel. And I look forward to uh, discussing with you today and working with you in the months ahead on the great issues before us. Those platitudes won't be enough to placate progressives in the Democratic Party. Israel is slaughtering children. Many of them believe America has blood on its hands for financing Israel's war. It is a major test at a deeply tense time. And Kamala Harris needs to find her feet fast. After sitting out events at the start, today she condemned protesters as unpatriotic and despicable. A man allegedly started the largest wildfire of the season in Northern California by pushing a burning car into a gully, destroying structures and leading to the thousands of evacuations. Tonight, homes exploding in flames as firefighters north of Sacramento desperately battle a monster inferno. The Park Fire. We're not cut off yet. We're good, but the heat is insane. Outside the town of Cohasset, terrifying scenes on the tiny town's main road. I'm completely surrounded right now, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to bone out of here and see if I can get ahead of this thing, because I'm going to, I'm going to end up getting caught. Multiple large homes and structures engulfed gas tanks violently flaring as high as the trees. Nearly 4,000 fleeing their homes, but some were trapped, forced to shelter in place. We've got approximately 100 vehicles 
that are uh, sheltering at the radio towers on Glasser Road with uh, fire department personnel. Flames breaking out Wednesday afternoon in a park outside of Chico, California, burning 4,000 acres an hour. By daybreak, scorching more than 70,000 acres and an unknown number of homes. The fire deliberately set, according to authorities, who are aware of this video posted to TikTok by someone who says they saw it happen. I watched the guy blow up his car and then put it in neutral and roll it down the hill and take off like nothing happened. Police arresting a 42 year old man and say this is the vehicle pushed down the embankment that started the fire. Over in Europe now, disruption by climate activists has German politicians demanding better protection for the country's airports. Activists were able to breach fences and disrupt air traffic for the second day in a row. The German interior minister, Nancy Faeser, criticised the blockades as dangerous, dumb and criminal and lambasted airport operators for not securing their sites more effectively. Faeser wants to punish unauthorised airfield access with up to two years in jail. Traffic at Frankfurt Airport, Germany's busiest, was halted temporarily on Thursday after the activists blocked runways by gluing themselves to the tarmac. They said protesters were able to cut through a wire mesh fence to access the airport grounds. Their actions came a day after similar disruption affected Cologne Bonn Airport. The activists have vowed that the blockades are just the beginning of a campaign to exit oil, gas and coal by 2030. They have listed several countries across Europe and North America where disruptions are planned in the coming weeks. Similar actions had been attempted at other European airports, including London, Vienna, Oslo and Zurich, but they had been foiled by authorities. Fraport, the operator responsible for external protection, says there are more than 18 miles of regularly patrolled fencing at Frankfurt Airport, secured by technical systems. A source said Germany's interior ministry considers current protection standards insufficient, with a need for more resistant fences and modern signal and video systems. The source added that the ministry is coordinating better with the federal states on regulation to better protect German airports. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. With the Paris Olympics about to get underway, the French capital is almost hosting an exhibition that celebrates the urban cultures and practices that have become Olympic disciplines in recent years. BMX bikes, surfboards, even a climbing wall. Essential tools in their respective disciplines signed by the champions who used them. This exhibition, Spot 24, tells the story of the sports that debuted at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, alongside this year's newcomer, breakdance. Even sports venues have become works of art, like this basketball court. It's got a new look thanks to designer Stefan Ashpool. There are also pieces from the Olympic Museum in Lausanne. The idea is to spotlight the urban cultures that have contributed to the game's history. Each piece is named after the move he made to create it. Conti counted around 50 separate maneuvers, making up something of a breakdance vocabulary. All the work I've done here comes from the thought, actually it would be cool to somehow record the marks I make on the ground. And the display here includes another totemic object for fans of all sports the Olympic torch in its Parisian incarnation. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We will see you again on Monday with the latest happenings across the globe. Stay tuned as Anuradhi Vikramar Singha will join you next with Nightly Business Report. Well, thank you for watching. Good night.